brothers, let us begin this Mass of Christian burial for Father Rory and the King. That is, we do everything in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be with you. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Roderick, your servant and priest, whom you honored with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exalt forever in the glorious home of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the few of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction but they are in peace. For if before men indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because every grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord.
second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, no one lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why then do you judge your brother? Or you, why do you look down on your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, Every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us shall give an accounting of himself to God. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus arrived in Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. If ever a just soul would be in the hand of God, it would be Father McKee. Today, his pain, his suffering, and his torments have come to an end. We pray today that he is truly at peace in the heavenly kingdom. This is our faith. This is the faith we all believe and share. And this is the faith Father McKee lived throughout his entire life and 57 years of priesthood. The Book of Wisdom also talks about though our human nature wants another more time, we can't have it. Because in the eyes of those who are foolish, they appear to be dead and are restored in affliction and going forth from us, utter destruction. And that's our human part today. We don't want to lose a loved one. There just isn't a good time. And if we could have one more hug, one more kiss, one more talk, we still wouldn't be satisfied. That's our human nature. The next line is so important in the Book of Wisdom, but they are at peace. For today, Rory has more peace, more joy, more life than all of us who are here right now. For today, his mission has been complete. The mission throughout his life and throughout his priesthood has come to an end. And he now lives that promise of eternal life given to each one of us by the Lord's death and resurrection. In Paul's letter to the Romans, it begins with, no one lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. Throughout his 57 years of priesthood, Father McKee did just that. He came here as a newly ordained priest from Ireland at the age of 24. Think about this. He left his family, his friends, his surroundings, his country, came to America not knowing any person, not knowing any priest, not knowing this city or Maryland, and here he started his priesthood, a calling given to him by God. At the age of 24, he was truly an example for living for others. And so for the next 57 years, he served in various parishes throughout Maryland and the District of Columbia. And he had numerous assignments, not because he wasn't happy or people were complaining about him in an assignment, but because of the, his talents and his gifts. The Cardinals realized that Father McKee could be used in so many various assignments because of his love for people and the talents that God gave him. In 2012, Rory came to the rectory, we talked, and he said he was about to retire, and he would love to live at St. Patrick's. And I said, fabulous. So when he retired, he came to St. Patrick's, and he was here until 2021. And while he was here, he would always help out, would love to hear confessions and celebrate Mass. Would help out if I got called out for something, I could always depend on Rory and Father John to help me out, to back me up. They were always there for that. He celebrated Mass, loved it so much that towards the end of his time, he had to sit on a chair with oxygen, but wanted to celebrate Mass for the people. That's the priest we remember today. Rory also 
had a great gift for bringing people together and have special dinners. And while he was here at the rectory, he did that many times. And at the retirement residence, he did that a few times. When he was here, he would kind of start his morning by getting a cup of coffee. And over the years, he closed down a few coffee shops, but he always found a new one to get to. And then he'd come back, and we would have lunch, and then he would say, are we all in for dinner? And we would say, yes. And he would bring down one of his great bottles of wine. Many joyous, joyous dinners in the dining room. He belonged to a wine club then, so it was endless drinking as far as after dinner. And no one lives for oneself, and no one should drink for oneself. And Rory made sure we all were together to enjoy a good dinner, enjoy fellowship, and enjoy that wine. To his family, to Roy and Jenny and Rory, know we grieve with you. To all his family members back home in Ireland, know your uncle, your friend, and your family member will truly, truly be missed. As you have seen throughout these last few days, the love that many have had for him. Many have loved your uncle because of the love he gave to each one of us. The joys that we experience are because of him. So today, know your uncle was loved. Know your friend and your family member was truly appreciated and will not be forgotten. He has made an impact on each one of our lives, or we wouldn't be here today. That's the priest we remember today. A good priest, a good uncle, a good friend, and a gentle representative of the Lord. Rory, rest in peace. Have a nice glass of wine on us, and one day we'll join you for another glass. Shalantra. God bless. My sisters and brothers, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for us, his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We join our prayers to his. Our brother, Frederick Roderick McKee, shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ Bring him into your presence, where he will take his place in the heavenly liturgy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord the family and friends of Father Roderick McKee seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, consecrated life, and the permanent diacritic. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have no hope because they do not know Christ, may they receive faith in the resurrection and in the life of the world to come. Let us pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have reward of their goodness, let us pray to the Lord. For all the souls of the faithful departed, may they rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. It is truly right. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Roderick, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here through Christ our Lord. And now it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere 
to give you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. And now it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying may be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be made to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. and gave the chalice to the same The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose will you will, you recon, you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with the Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, 
Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, St. Patrick, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for and freely help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Rory, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the power and the glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other the sign of peace.
God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Roderick, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother, and may our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day, we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself.
into your hands, Father of mercies. We commend our brother Roderick in the sure and certain hope that together with all who died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Roderick in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us. Listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. We ask you in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us prepare to take our brother to his place of rest.